declined to talk about and um, I think so, a lot of us are interested in, I'll broaden a question that came from Ann Sander in terms of the ballot issues that are coming uh, <clears throat> along down the pike this year, perhaps right to work, perhaps gay marriage, how you believe those are going to factor into uh, the performance of the candidates this year um, and, and motivate voters. Well, I appreciate the question. Uh, and uh, I had the chance this morning to, to watch much of the discussion, not all of the discussion. And, uh, and I, I would remind everyone that 90 minutes ago, Governor Kasich stood there and, and literally word for word repeated a quote that Governor Rick Snyder provided September 12, 2010, when he said, right to work is not on my agenda. Word for word, Rick Snyder used those words. And then, of course, uh, we, we saw then over the course of, of Rick Snyder's uh, uh, term repealing uh, collective bargaining, reverting much of Michigan uh, and how they interact with collective bargaining units into a right-to-work state. Make no mistake, if John Kasich is re-elected, and I have my doubts, but if he were re-elected, right-to-work will pass the state of Ohio. He has an unmanageable caucus, part of the caucus on the Republican side of the aisle, is, uh, is committed to right to work. Right, wrong, or indifferent, if you set yourself apart from the issue, the numbers are just there within the House Republican Caucus. You have leadership that has, over the course of their, in the case of Speaker Batchelder, more than 40 years of, of public life, and with President Faber, more than, I think it's 15 years of public life, have articulated support for the repeal of collective bargaining. Keith Faber was one of the, the individuals who traveled the state uh, supporting Senate Bill 5. So we know what is coming, uh, not just Democrats, but those independents and a few Republicans left in the legislature who support collect, collective bargaining. They know what's coming. We know what's coming. And Rick Snyder uh, uh, said that, uh, that he did not support right to work. It was not on his agenda. And literally, word for word, here we are with John Kasich mimicking uh, and I don't use it as pejorative, repeating uh, what uh, Rick Snyder said previously. It's coming. And, uh, and if it were to be on the ballot, I make no mistake, it's one of the reasons why uh, John Kasich does not want to engage and would rather cut you off and immediately physically move away from the question. Um, interestingly enough, he did not want to engage at all. Someone who is uh, distributing literature at events today, says he's not running a campaign, and on that literature, as Joe Varden pointed out, the word conservative is probably written 20 times. For somebody who doesn't have a problem with the base, uh, handing out base material at a base event, and then denying he's got a problem with the base, he's got problems. This right-to-work issue is something that's going to weigh heavy on the political minds of those closest to the government. I don't know if uh, you all, I'm sure you did, have an opportunity to take a look at the public polling that's been out there, and not the polling that the Ohio Democratic Party's been paying for to try to prop up their candidate uh, for governor in his foundering campaign, but the actual legitimate public polling that's been out there, and they break those polls down, and, they, and, and one of the things that you'll see in, in, uh, in there is John Kasich's numbers among Republicans. I think the last one I saw that was public was something like 89 to 2. This, this, this is the base problem, apparently, that the Democrats are banking on for 2014. I also appreciate uh, Chairman Redfern's clairvoyance into, uh, into what's going to happen in 2015 when Bill Batchelder, who he mentioned, who's been a wonderful speaker and a terrific uh, leader in our state and certainly a conservative uh, um, who, who's helped uh, lift us out of the doldrums we found ourselves in uh, when Republicans moved in in 2011, um, who won't be there anymore. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how he uh, somehow guides uh, a, a bill that he won't be there uh, to be speaker for anymore uh, next year. Um, and so, you know, uh, on, on, on top of that, uh, right to work bills were dropped in this General Assembly by two uh, Republican legislators um, who thought that the, the, the concept and the issue should at least be discussed. Um, those bills never even got to the point of having hearings. Um, when uh, Republican leadership tells you it's not on their agenda, it's not because of any nefarious, uh, you know, attempt to, to, to dodge an issue. It's because it's not on their agenda. Because um, uh, it, it, it just happens to not be. And I think this is just sort of the first of what we'll probably hear many times today 
and you're going to hear many, many times over the next uh, you know, nine and a half months of uh, your lives covering the back and forth of this campaign of a red herring, an issue that's not really there, something that's divisive. When the Democrats don't really have a message, they don't really have a candidate, they don't have an effort that's, that's, uh, that's organized and together. And so they are trying to find these issues that are divisive and these issues that are wedge issues to, um, to drop into the public forum and make these kinds of, you know, um, uh, uh, you know wild claims about uh, what you ought to be expecting and what you should be happening that fly in the face of everything that we've actually seen and what reality would suggest is going to be the case. Going to be the case. Uh,